be four journals in one book. So, the first time, and then after that, yung magkakaroon tayo ng raffle kung sino yung mag-receive me ng Sophie's World. Or kung gusto nyo nalang, mag-raffle na lang pala tayo sa Sophie's World para ang hindi magtanong. That will be better. Okay? So, sige. Questions? Comments? Okay. Before that, ano, uh, please tell your name, okay? And then your affiliated institutions. And also, ano pa, sige, yun, then your comments and your realizations or what. Okay, sir? Uh, I am Jim William Cabrezas po from um, dito po <laughs> sa PNU, studying um, Bachelor of uh, Social Science in Asia. Um, um, so, napansin ko lang po na si Skinner, gusto niya na ang isang human uh, society to be put in a cage. Uh, by, uh, by, you know, by modifying their culture. And so, ang napansin ko po na para siya isang panopti ko kung saan ang pinagkaiba nga lang, yung power ko yung visible. Doon po yung uh, ibabaro ko yung notion ng focal ko ng system eh, kung saan may isang invisible power, isang dominant paradigm ng focal sa behavior ng mga tao. So, ayan, beliefs, uh, thoughts, and everything. And uh, itong mga tao as subjects sa uh, isang napakalaking um, as isang um, powerful or a uh, powerful na dominant paradigm which is invisible, they are uh, unaware that they are being subjugated by this um, uh, ano po, um, system. So ang tanong po ay kung, kung uh, if there's a possibility po ba na kapag sila ay naging aware doon po sa uh, ano nangyayari, kung baga naging aware sila na Uh, parte sila ng isang dominant paradigm na kumukontrol sa kanila, sa kanilang uh, behavior, na sa kanilang culture, na nag-modify sa kanilang culture, na parang, ano po siya, um, parang paglaya sa sarili from uh, false consciousness po, parang po. May possibility po ba na mag-aaral. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, sir. Okay, William. Uh, actually, magkita yung observation ng William about Michelle Kipo. Okay, particularly the panactic one. But first one that we need to take into consider is okay, the difference between panactic one and also Skinner operant conditioning is that that is a discovery of the operant conditioning. He discovered the operant conditioning by Skinner. He did not create it. And with the realization of his operant conditioning, he was able to realize okay, the idea of environmental determinism that we are conditioned by the given contingencies right and that is basically dependent on the principle okay selection is principle okay and yun, biogenic level anthogenic level different principles and social and cultural level okay now according to skinner the problem is we need to change culture and in changing culture Okay, we need to change behavior. And we need to be conscious. Because we are not conscious that we are operating in a larger opera okay, chamber. Okay, we are not conscious about it. And we need okay, to be conscious in the operation of this opera chamber. Okay, then, do not be passive. We can okay, opera opera of Of operational yet, okay, particularly to a panoptical, okay, particularly the by panoptical idea that he got from Jeremy Benta, okay, but okay, we can we can see it already not in the panoptical, but with the CCTV cameras out there, diba? Umamalasin yun. But of course, the CCTV cameras kasi natin hindi effective. Okay, bakit? Hindi kasi nagbibili at ang image. Okay? For example, okay, alam nyo ang nakabreak ng, ng panaktikon as, okay, as something that is false, kung sino, okay, kung kung gusto kong gawin ng mime. Okay, alam nyo kung sino nakabest criticized kay, kay ano, kay kung kung. Si Linda. Di ba may CCTV pero bakit ako nagpasara din? behavior na nakita nun. 
Okay? Silita yung ano? Diba? Do you remember? Yes. Okay? Pero kung all of a sudden, if, how are we going to okay, think? Is it possible to apply skinner yan may panaktikon in a larger scale? Yun ang question. Okay? Yes, it's possible. Because this is amazing. China is doing it already. Okay? That technological dictatorship wherein all of citizens is already being created. You search the internet. Meron po yung system and they are being regarded into reward systems. Bawat citizen, okay, pag, pag, pag lumabas ka sa public, okay, may points ka. Kung ano ba ang galaw mo, may points. Okay, nag-centralize ang kanila na ito and everyone is monitored already. Hindi ka lang namamonitor sa bahay mo. But you are monitored. Okay, everywhere. Oh. That is a miscellary. This is okay, the idea of skinner. The, te the technological, okay, possible. Okay, and now, if you are conscious of that, that is a giving of reward. Reinforcement and negative reinforcement. Kasi, okay, bago pa yung scores mo, Okay? You're going to lose privileges. Hindi ka makakasakay ng train, maglalatag ka, magiging district, ano, ano man na citizen. So, kailangan mo makuha yung points. Okay? Ganun pa, ganun pa din yung technology ng China ngayon. Particularly with regards to surveillance. Because if you know that you are being, okay, di ba? Under surveillance. Okay, what are you going to do? For example, sabi ko nga, okay, in exams, kung hindi ka conscious na may surveillance, may chichit ka. Right? But if there are, yung classroom, lagi natin ang different CCTVs, marami. Apat. Four quarters to that CCTV. Manunulad ka pa ba? Diba? You are aware. Oh, I have students before, way back in the province. Iniwala ko sa classroom. Pwede kayo exam. Why? Because sa classroom ng CCTV. And sila, hindi nagsunulad. Bakit ka sila? Conscious sila. Unless hindi ka conscious. Okay? So, if you're definitely not going to, okay, uh, have to change your behavior. Okay, for that, Okay, and if there is, okay, for the for the Okay, and after, okay, see Sir George. So, after student naman, sa uh, professor sa naman tayo. By the way, pag si Sir George, we'll be doing collaboration with the Philippine philosophy. Okay, and I'm also doing, uh, I'm here inside of the Ramirez, and I'm taking up my own name in UPD demand, and I teach in Green Hills. Uh, my question to them, something on a positive note. Do you think Skinner has a very good potential when it comes to educational technology? For example, I've been doing gamification of learning, where you use Kahoot inside the classroom. And I expect when you use Kahoot inside the classroom, that's the loudest class. I mean, because the students are enjoying, when they see the group, they are going to the rankings, and they are going to the rankings. So do you think the do you think education can be understood as an operant conditioning, especially in the concept of gamification of learning? And can you also say that you know what a teaching machine uh skinner, can you say that it's a modern thing when it comes to educational technology? You know, thank you. Actually the sadhu that is very door. Because actually that is getting gamification is one of the Okay, okay, in order to improve, okay, particularly education. You try to imagine that you are being educated, okay, and you are not aware. You know, maganda eh, di ba? Particularly, if you enjoy, okay, yung lessons, and then sooner or later, because of the development of technology, okay, and as you can see, okay, yung e-spinner na teaching machine, prototype na, 
But now, this is a challenge for us. Okay? If you, if, if for future teachers, for teachers, one of the innovations that we could do is particularly, okay, we teach our students on not being conscious that they are being teach. Yun yung isang maganda. Okay? So, and that can be, sabi mo ha, what is, what is gamification? Okay? We apply, o sa game, we apply, bakit nahuhuk ko? Sabihin na natin. Kayo, yung iba sa inyo, hindi na atik sa gambling. Pero na atik kayo sa, okay, ML. Right? Right? Oh, uh, what else? Marami tayong iba't ibang addiction. Okay? Diba? Depende, according to age, ang addiction. Pag medyo mga tito, tita, mami ka, pag mami, ano, lola, candy crush. <laughs> diba? Candy crush, ano, uh, uh, for me, okay, mo, uh, one word, five letter, etc. Right? And as you can see that, mayroong reinforcement. Pero yung reinforcement na yun, is it artificial or natural? Okay, artificial. Okay, for example, even in, okay, sa, sa amin, sa, sa Facebook, yung bunch, yung page on bunch ba yun? Ano, makalaga pala yun sa mga followers? Ayaw na, ayaw nila makawala yun. Diba? And that is part. Pero artificial ito. Right? Artificial. For example, I, I'm not anymore familiar with okay, Mobile Legend. Pero I'm familiar before in Dota. Kasi mag-Dota na Dota natin ako player. So, pero kung mapapansin mo, yung mga nakukuha kang diba, trophy, level up, magtataka ka ano, that is, the level up is a form of false consciousness. Kasi, petisis mo yun eh. Nag-repetis ka dun sa, sa mga levels. Okay? Pag nagbaba yung rank mo, na, na, you feel sad about it. Pag tumasang rank mo, okay. Kailangan mo yung maglaro. Bakit? Para tumasang rank mo. Di ba ang ganda? Kung mapapansin mo sa education, kung ganun, if we can apply it in education, okay, and kung mapapansin, Umababas lahat tayo. We are all players. Okay? And we are will be entered into education as a game. And we can learn through it, through innovation, reputation. Pero, syempre, papasok to technological education. Yun ang gagawin sa classroom. And at the same time, okay, what will happen? Okay, yung teacher naman would have their own personal approaches to their students, particularly the personal concerns that they're going to assist. And the problem with this, actually, yung nag-receive na reaction is cleaner, is sabi nga, reaction is cleaner, is the interaction with with students. Nakawawala na yung interaction. Pero yung sabi ni Skinner, hindi naman makawawala yun. Makapadali na ang trabaho ng teacher. Sa dami yung trabaho ng teacher ngayon. Particularly sa pagdami ng students. Right? And through gamification, that is a challenge. Okay. Pero that is a, a great challenge not only for, for educators. Ito ang pinakamalaking challenge namin sa philosophy. We need, okay, this is a meditation. We need to have gamification in philosophy because we philosophers are not concerned into dissemination. Hindi kami nito disseminate. We are not concerned into pedagogy because we are only concerned into higher form of Thinking. We are only concerned in the search for truth. Hindi yun yung wala. Pero ngayon, may magaganda ngayon kasi ni K-12 na nagiging concern ng mga philosophers of pedagogy. Okay? So, si Sir, tatanggap ko ba nito? O, hindi na daw. Hindi na ni Sir. Okay? So, see you next. Ask him back.
if you actually get a certain question, you know, and as a teacher, this has always been a question of how can we motivate. Usually, sabi nga, the problem with reinforcement, that what we are doing in the classroom, is we only reinforce the intellectual elite. That's the problem. Okay, because we only give the okay, reward to, to those who are in the top. So do you think this is there resiliency there? Because every you know, one size fits all. Eh? You apply to all and check it out, and you give reward, and you give reward it to okay, the the elite. Okay. So as a teacher, sure, if there would be technological okay application of behavioral modifications, you can do it. Okay, because it's very, in these conditions that we have right now, it's very difficult. Pero, personally, I would say, okay, personally, yung tanong ni Ma, kung possible ba yun, I would say that as I reflect on my experience, there is a possibility, but that possibility is very selective. Because I was once a student who is not doing well in the class. Okay. Well, I'll give you a example. Why am I not doing the class? Because I am a nobody in the class. I don't have any face in the class. Because teacher doesn't recognize this because there are too many. Right? When I was in my, okay, uh, prep up to the grade 4, ang grade ko, palakol, mga malakol. You try to imagine, okay, this is a good irony. Going to look for that picture. You know, when I was in prep, I am the goat. Ano yung sabi ng goat? Di ba sa PMA yung goat, siya yung pinakamapaga. But in NBA, yung goat, the greatest ano, of all mine. But in our section, I am the goat na in the batch. Kasi ako lang PhD. Di ba? But before, I, I was a good. Bakit? Kasi yung nagsasayo kami, okay, aming combination, ang activity lang namin, huwag kami, hindi na yung hawa ko, gagawin mo na lang kami. Yan yung combination. That's the combination. Try to imagine yung pinasay sa akin ng teacher. Tapos yung mga malalapit sa mga teacher, sila yung mga Snow White, diba? Sila yung Sleeping Beauty, Ako yun, parang dahil pa yun sa Snow White, okay, may Snow White, seven dwarfs eh. At least may roll ka. We try to imagine my own, gagawin mo gano'n lang, tapos para mapagsalita ka lang, G is for the goal. <laughs> diba? That's why, that's why I'm not doing well in the class. Kasi hindi ako na lang, lagi napapansin yung, yung intellectual hindi. Okay, yung magagaling, yung malapit sa ato, etc. Okay? And then, yung nasa in group. But all of a sudden, pagpunta ko ng grade 4, all of a sudden, may teacher ako na nagpa-record, na kilala ako kasi may bigan ng nanay ko. O naging selectionist siya. Okay, naging selectionist na siya. So ako yung tinuruan, ako yung ano, nasa kapitbahay namin. Ako na yung naiinom ako. Okay, yun, yun yung pepeng mangyari in our current conditions. But with our conditions now, it's more of a challenge in the classroom. It, it's more of a challenge. Kaya na, when, uh, pagdating ko, ako na yung, ako na yung naging focus ng teacher, nagkaroon na ako, na, na-recognize na ako na ako na si Rodrigo. I was already doing well, in grade 5, grade 6. Okay, and then the break name artificial reinforcement to natural reinforcement. Possible yun. Okay? And that is the challenge. We need to have that consciousness and how can we do it? Okay? So, sige. Okay, dito naman tayo pro USP questions. Pag-ulitin natin na
we find um, Skinner's methodology problematic. Why? Because if you have a methodology, mo, mali na yung mali yung reinforcement. Niya. Hence, um, since he wants the behavior to be controlled, para we find it wrong kasi nag-i-implementado tayo. Hence, kumbaga, yung humans, nadenehumanize sila, which contradicts um, his own, kumbaga, yung mismo ideology niya na dapat empirical instead of theoretical yung approach. Kasi, uh, for me po, yung naging, yung naging outcome ng mismo study niya is naging theoretical rather empirical. Kasi kapag empirical, um, subjective siya. And kapag theoretical, medyo naging objective siya. Kasi we're coming. So, we find that um, na kumaabot siya sa pagdidehumanize natin as human persons. I'm asking po if nagiging tama yung interpretation na. Kasi from what I deduce from the discussion with you know, this background talaga, yun po yung pagkakaintindi din namin. And medyo radical lang yun. Thank you, Gina. Actually, that would be a normal reaction from the philosophers. Okay, particularly, it's because the philosophers, the philosopher is using introspection. Okay, and the question is, it goes, okay, what is, what is it, what is, okay, what does it mean to be human? And we try to investigate to be human is we need to take on Aristotle. Okay, according to him, that man is a rational animal it's because we have soul, right? And we have the mental states, and we are capable of these mental processes. And this mental, pro this mental states, this rationality, makes us different from any other forms of animals, right? That is actually the normal. And we, therefore, may kaya na pagdating kaya rin ito, okay, as part of our, okay, being rational, we have functions. Okay, the function of the rational soul, okay, we have the will, and then we have the intellect. And therefore, we have this freedom. Then I will go back now to the criticism of okay, Skinner. What is freedom? These are just speculations. What is dignity? What is the soul? Philosophers have attempted to answer it based on speculations. We define humanity or being man okay, based on speculations because we use introspection. Sa kanya, okay, let's start with experiment. Kaya may nangyari na niya. Okay? And when we start with analyzing behavior, what makes man different from any other beings is particularly because of what? Okay? Of a higher form of behavior. Because our behavior functions into different levels. Right? Our behavior functions into a very highly sophisticated level in terms of biogenic. The first selection is principle. Second, ontogenic. Ang bilis natin mag-adapt sa environment. Third, we create culture. Social and cultural. But animals, nakakagma sila. But all of us are being controlled okay, by even contingencies. Okay? And that is in the perspective of, of science. But that scientific inquiry is grounded into pragmatism. As if we define human as human based on philosophical assumptions, but yet we don't know whether that is true or not. So that is one of the, actually, that is written in, in, the book of Skinner, we have freedom and dignity. And that, that, that's the reason why we need an answer to that. Okay. Please take note that Skinner started with 
scientific inquiry. And then later on, he applied it, and then later on, examined his philosophy. Kaya ang sabi ko, that is a kind of philosophy of science. So, I hope na, yun ang, yun, 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 yun yung answer, yun yung answer ni Skinner with regards to that. Okay? So, for this, we'll be getting a china. Okay, so, uh, dahil hindi naman nyo kasama si Sir, you know?
Your name, ha? Okay, sige. Well, last question. Say, I don't know. Question. Wala na akong bibigay ng ano, ha? Darn it. Okay, so, pero since man si... Ano? Nalimutan ko lang mga name ni Tessie. Ay, pasin. Say, sir. Hindi pin po sa lahat. Although, actually, this is a question for validation from you. Kasi, this is something I'd like to share lang po based from what I learned today. Kasi, if you want to understand philosophy of education, you also have to understand it in a Filipino context. So, nakita ko kasi ng resemblance yung mag-appropriate ni Dr. Arbetes ng scientific inquiry ni Bill Skinner doon sa ginawang historical sa history na ginawa ni Reynato Eleto, which is from the Passion of Revolution. So, first of all, hindi siya about for revolution. It's a... It's a way of telling history from the law. Kaya yung chapter 1 is called History from the Law. Ang naging kapukulang kasi, if dito is somehow a psychological condition, doon naman po is historical condition. Kasi, ang nangyayari, ang nagtutunan lang natin sa loob ng klaso ay yung mga sinasabi ng mga banyaga na nagtagumpay sa atin ng pagsugan. Hindi lang makikinggan yung mga, yung history sa mga nagre-reflect talaga sa mga tao. Sinimulan niya yung libro nila na nagsasabi siya na wala na yung makakalala kung may nag-revolt back then sa camp. I think kung tama yung pagkakalala. Parang nagtawa ko siya na hindi lang sa ideological yung pag-condition sa sa tao, kung hindi pati yung historical. Kasi, if makikita mo, kasi yung mga nilirep, yung mga ginagamit na reference ng mga from the past, is like, like the, sa mga banyaga. Yung mga elites. Pero hindi natin nakikita kung ano yung inisip ng mga tao. Yung mga karaniwang tao, kung ano yung nararanasin na sa araw-araw. Ayun po, nakikita ko lang siya ng somehow resemblance. And I think it's a good discuss ng class of education. Malagay po na yung consider natin yung society natin para mas makita ka rin siya ng kahulog. Kahulog. Okay. Thank you, Charles. Actually, the comment lies due to the selection is pretty simple of a cultural and social. Okay, so yun. Mapapansin natin, makikita natin yan. And we can apply it also in the perspective of Renato Constantino's critique, okay, of colonial education. For example, bakit tayo na ito? It's because of the colonial education. It's colonial education is a kind of conditioning. Okay? That is conditioning with... But why do we have this kind of culture? That culture falls into the historical conditioning based on social and cultural. And that social and cultural, we are part of particularly the ontogenic level of conditioning. And then later on, you know, ipapas natin sa susunod na generation. It's, it's actually a good observation. So, I hope last one question. Okay, sir, I was of the other. Actually, sir, I'll give you a question. It's more of a challenge because uh, I am actually reflecting with regard to Doc Rod's uh, appropriation with scenery and uh, uh, philosophy or concepts into teaching because I believe that most of our audience are actually uh, future educators and teachers. So somehow we are seeing ourselves that uh, we will be looking upon our students in the Skinner's box. And probably this, since we're part of this uh, existence and they're also part of the bigger box in the school of life. But the challenge somehow because we might be using some uh, operant uh, conditioning to somehow change the behaviors of our students for them to become effective members of our society. And then I am actually reflecting with regard to the invisible influence also of our society, like for example, the social media and some other aspects in which uh, our behaviors have also changed. And some of the challenges they would like to pose is uh, how effective probably we can be as educators to, in, to infuse this operant conditioning to somehow develop our students to become a better member or a better version of who they are. And to somehow uh, 
uh, combat the gay or at least filter the effects, for example, coming from the outside bigger box in which they are part of that in some in some extent to some extent it also it also conditions their behavior. So somehow again it's something that I appreciate because I'm not really familiar with these killers um, aspect in which na dapat sa, sa education because from the philosophical vantage point ito talaga yung nakikita namin na how can we reconcile okay, the process in which the student will get something in the process of education and uh, somehow the influence of the informal education or encounter that we had in the bigger box, in the bigger scale of life. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir. Sir, ask ko lang pangalan ito. Kasi matagal na kami nakikita ni sir sa mga conferences pero lagi ko nakakalimutan. Si Sir Gilbert. Okay. So, hindi na ako kasalita kasi maganda yung uh, Sir Gilbert. Okay, that's one question. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay, I'm Marlene from Hades. Okay, I'm going to thank you because I'm going to be part of this seminar. As a student, I'm going to be able to talk to you about the philosophy of education. I hope that I'm going to be able to talk to you about the seminar. Before we end, okay, our our program, okay, I would like to na to invite you to prepare a group picture tayo, okay. So you want to kuha tayo from there, na lang tapos magsama-sama na tayo dito, okay. Then after that, we're going to have a a raffle for this, okay. So sige, pa-invite na lang, Mrs. 